Hi, my name is Aiden. In this screencast, we're going to create a new ASP.NET 5 NG2 seed project. We're going to use ASP.NET 5 Release Candidate 1 and Anglet 2 Alpha 46. What we have in front of us is a file new ASP.NET 5 project, and it's an empty one. And when we switch to the browser, we can see that we are serving Hello World no matter what endpoint we are hitting. And that's because we have a middleware that tells ASP.NET 5 that uh, that's what it's supposed to do. So we're going to need to change this, tell it to serve static files instead. You can hit control period and add the package. And we're also going to want to use default files, which will try to serve index.html without actually needing to specify that we are looking for index.html. So we're going to go ahead and add a new HTML page to our www root folder, index.html, and say hello Aiden. And then switch back to our browser and make sure that we are serving our page. And we are. So one of the differences uh, from before is that the Angular team is now pushing the releases to NPM. So we're going to want to get Angular 2 from NPM instead of using the CDNs that we've used before. So we're going to add a new file here. We're going to add an npm configuration file. And here we're going to specify that we have dependencies and that we want to fetch Angular 2. And we want to have the latest alpha, which looks like it's alpha 47 now. So we're also going to want to get ES6 shim going to get the latest version and we want the system.js ES6 module loading polyfill and we're going to want to get the latest version there as well which I know is 19.6 so now we're restoring our packages and if we open a file explorer and navigate to where the project is located on disk uh, we can see that we have a node modules catalog and uh, there we have uh, ES6 and system.js uh, and for some reason we don't have Angular there because it's not installed All right, so let's force the download by opening a command prompt and let this run for a while Alright, so we've uh, forced restore by running npm install. And now if we take a look in our folder structure here, we have a couple of node modules. And we actually want to copy uh, a couple of files from the node modules uh, catalog uh, directory to the www root folder. Since we won't be able to reference files in node modules folder uh, from our index.html page. And to copy these files, I'm going to use gulp. So we're going to add a new file here. We're going to add a gulp configuration file. Before we do that, we're going to come to a package.json file and tell it that we have a dev dependency to gulp and that we want to use uh, the latest version, which, which is 3.9.0. So I don't know, sometimes I get version uh, help with browsing the versions and sometimes I don't. So I feel this experience is really buggy for the moment. And I'm using Visual Studio 2015 update one. All right, so now we've installed Gulp. Uh, let's create a task that will copy a couple of files for us to a lib folder in our www root folder. Let's create a a paths object and we actually don't want to copy all our files from node modules we just want to copy a couple of files so we're gonna create a separate variable that contains our libs that we actually want to copy yeah, so let's create libs which will be an array let's get rid of this default uh, task and let's create a task that's named uh, libs, for instance. 
and here we're gonna want to copy our files. So we're simply just gonna pass our libs array to gulp source and gonna pipe pipe it to gulp destination and we're gonna want to put it into li the libs destination. So we open up Task Explorer now and refresh. We found our libs task. If we run this guy, we should have gotten a lib folder there. Uh, so let's take a look at what actually happened. Yeah, right. So we aren't actually using the full path here. So the easiest fix for this is just to do paths npm. Right, I run the task again. We got a lib folder with the files that we can reference in our index.html. Uh, but we don't want to actually come here and right click and do run each time or run gulp from the command prompt. We actually want this to run every time that we've built. We're gonna want a, another task actually that cleans up these uh, libs after us when we're done. So, and for that, we're gonna use a library called rimref or a, or a node module. So let's come here to our package uh, package JSON file and add a new dev dependency to rimref. Let's get that one. Switch back to our gulp file rid of this at the beginning. You can see when I associated the libs task with the after build, uh, uh, after build event in Visual Studio, we've got this uh, binding at the top of our gulp file. Let's define rimref, load it. And rimref takes a path that we want to clear, and that's our uh, paths lib path. I actually want to, it actually takes a callback here as well, which we can resolve into our task to tell it when it's done. So if we run the clean task, it will clear the lib folder, and if we run the libs task, it will make it appear. Once again, we don't want to run everything from the task runner explorer. We want to bind it to the clean event in Visual Studio. So now when we do clean on the project, we get rid of the project, add the libs, and we build, and we copy them there. So that's neat. Uh, <clears throat> so let's go ahead and create our and wire up Angular 2 really quickly. So this will be an Angular 2 ASP.NET 5 seed project. And the first thing we're gonna want to load is the ES6 shims uh, library. And then we want the system.js file uh, library. And let's create a script tag now. And tell it that, the, and configure it to use default JS extensions to true, so we don't want to specify JS each time. And now we can include Angular 2 dev, and then once again create a custom script tag, uh, system dot system dot import, and we're gonna have an app file, uh, which you haven't created yet. So it's gonna live in an app folder. So app slash app. We also want to catch all our errors and log them to, co to the console. Instead of typing hello Aiden here, uh, we're gonna have a custom component called my app. Which is loading. And as it were was in the beta of ASP.NET 5, to use uh, to have TypeScript files, we're gonna need to put them in a scripts folder. And to this folder, we're gonna add 
a TypeScript conf configuration file. And we're going to tell it that the module, uh, module, module system we're going to load uh, use is common.js. And we want to output all our uh, JavaScript files to www.root app. And we want to use experimental decorators, true, and emit decorator metadata, true. Now that we've done this, we can add a TypeScript file. Let's call it app.ts. Now that we created app.ts, we can start writing some Angular 2 code. Uh, we're going to import component, view, and bootstrap from Angular 2, Angular 2. And now we can create our class, app component, and we can bootstrap uh, our application and pass in app component. We're just going to have a simple message here. We're going to tell it that it's a string, which it will say, hello world. And we're also going to need to use annotations. Tell it that this is a component. And pass in an options uh, object. And give it a selector. And our custom, uh, custom element if we take a look at index.html, was called my app. So we're going to point out the my app element. We're going to declare a view in line here. Use a template to declare it. And we're just going to have we're going to bind the message and we're going to have an input where we bind the message to the, the value. So we're going to bind this by using the square bracket parenthesis syntax and tell it to both listen for events and bind to message. Right, so let's make this a bit bigger. So it's a super simple component. And we can see here that we can actually navigate to our import directives. It finds the, uh, the TypeScript definition files for us. We don't actually need to reference them explicitly anymore. And they are, so this is one of the differences as well I forgot to mention. If you take a look, in our node modules catalog under Angular 2, we can see that the definition files are shipped along with the library itself. And we let Visual Studio find these for us. So we aren't getting the definition, the typings from the definitely typed repo at GitHub anymore. The Angular team are pushing it along with the actual release of Angular 2 instead. So if we switch back to a browser now, Press F5. We can see that we've loaded Angular 2 without getting any errors. Let's just refresh that once again. Don't get any errors. And let's see if the bindings are working. And it seems to work. So we have a super simple seed. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep this seed up to date. And uh, we're also going to add authentication and authorization against a web API controller in ASP.NET 5 uh, to the same seed project. Uh, but uh, that's all for now, and until next time, have a nice day.